what is going on in today's video we are going to build a scanner that looks through all of the different cryptos so ETH BTC and pretty much every single altcoin here there's probably like 75 to 100 of them and essentially what it's gonna do this algo is gonna scan through and see which crypto is breaking out meaning hey if this is resistance right here is it breaking out is it going past resistance or is it breaking down is it going below resistance so let me go over to uh, my Twitter here twitter.com slash moondev on YouTube and I just explained it here and I like to explain all of my strategies before I build it simply because it's a little easier to, to understand if I just write it out in clear English because sometimes I just run through this so um, yeah this is my Twitter Moondev on YT and essentially we're building a scanner trading algo that will scan BTC Ethereum and 74 plus more altcoins to see which is breaking out aka smashing resistance or breaking down aka smashing support and then when we see which one is doing one of those things we can later build into the algo maybe trade it you know we'll have to see what type of strategy we want to work on there but you can hear one of my strategies that i built here on youtube going crazy and trying to close positions because it looks like we've hit our our uh, profit target on a lot of these positions you can see this is just a testing account so i don't use crazy amounts of money or anything but um, that algorithm is running down here it's you can read this if you'd like it's a mean reversion algorithm we built here on youtube but at the end of the day uh, i'm here just to to do my day uh, you know i'm i do this every single day i build new algorithms every single day about six to eight hours per day and my thought is, hey, this stuff was really, really hard for me to learn because there, there weren't many resources out there. And it makes sense. It's a pretty secretive industry. Nobody wants to share their strategies. I get it. I get it. But hey, I've learned everything on the internet. So I need to, I need to put out at least some information on this. So what I try to do is I'll take you know 30, 30 minutes to two hours and just create live here with you on YouTube. Because if I can show you how to automate your strategy or help you with one piece of your strategy or anything, it's going to increase your, your trading and you're going to be a better trader because of it. And I'm a, I'm a huge, huge believer that algorithmic trading is, is the best way to trade. So if I can teach you how to automate some of it, that's awesome. So let's just dive right into it. Um, if you do appreciate me sharing all this information here for free, please go ahead and just tap that like button. That's the only thing I do ask. And I know I'll be flying through a lot of this and just just coding fairly quickly. I'll try to walk through some, I'll try to talk through most of it. But if I'm ever going too fast, just let me know in, in the comments below if you have a question and I'll, I'll make sure to check out all of the comments and answer those and then if you ever want the code or anything else just go ahead and there's a link below and you can just grab everything there so let's go ahead and import the imports we need so you'll need to import all of these things if you don't have one of these things then just pip install it like ccxt or pandas or yeah those are pretty much the two and essentially where we're going to start we need to connect to the exchange so i'm just going to connect to my exchange here by doing this little import here and we can see i need to bring in this don't share config paste it in there and there we go now we're connected to the exchange so what i want to do is then start the scanner so let's say scanner here and I'm gonna say time frame. Let's check out the time frame of five minutes. This will be, you know, we're looking at five minute bars and number of bars. Let's do, um, I believe 288 bars. 288 bars equals 24 hours. So I'm gonna do 289 because. So we get one extra. Actually, it's not one extra. It's just how coding works. 
And then what we want to go ahead and do now that we're connected here, um, I want to bring in my nice functions file. So I have it import nice functions and import nice functions. Let's do as n. So now I can call my nice functions file. This is a file that we built here on YouTube. Uh, if you need to see that, go ahead and check around if you want just the code immediately. There's a link for that below. I put together a boot camp that just walks everybody through everything. A little more structured, you know, this is my day to day. You can hear my algo going crazy. I'm actually gonna um, maybe lower the volume. I don't know, let me know if that's too loud, but I do like to hear the sounds going off because it knows, it tells me my algo is working. I can also just watch it down here. It looks like we're trying to close out of a position for a while now. Probably not a lot of liquidity, but looks like we hit our target here of 9% on this, whatever this SHIB USD is. Looks like we hit our target on sand, which is nice. Looks like we hit our target on Zill. Hit our target on XRP, hit our target on link. So this is doing well because it's a mean reversion strategy, but um, yeah, like I said, I go over all that. So let's go ahead and let's get all the markets. So let's get all, all markets. And we'll do that by saying exchanges, exchanges equals Phoenix, okay? And then let's say for exchange in exchanges, DF equals PD dot data frame and say for ticker in fee markets, markets, We need to get fee markets actually. So let's go ahead and make fee markets up here. Um, let's go ahead and put it right here where I said fee markets equals femex dot fetch currencies. And you can see I'm calling femex, but femex is really calling CCXT up there. And let's say for ticker in fee markets, let's say tickers equals ticker from zero to six. So essentially we'll just get the, the ticker symbol. And then we want to remove, let's say F tickers. Slash USDT. So we're just getting the ticker symbol and then we're adding a USDT to it. So this is gonna work for the spot markets. You can see that I trade on the derivatives market, but uh, the spot markets show good volume as well. So let's say print F. Print F and let's say tickers. on exchange and from there I think we should just run this to make sure everything's working well so let's say scanner and let's run this see what we have okay so this shows all of the tickers on what exchange so later or actually I probably won't even need to do this with you since <clears throat> Since I'll show you how to do it for Femex, this is one exchange. You could do it for all the other exchanges as well. Coinbase, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Binance, whatever. Um, but now what we want to go ahead and do is we need to get the new bars for each of each of the, the symbols that we just found. But I think what might happen is sometimes there won't be bars. So I'm gonna wrap this in the try block, say try. And this is a little sketch when I do it like this, but um, 
it's all good. Let's say, what should we do here? And I'm sorry, sometimes I do have to think because this is my day to day, right? So it's not like I'm just, um, I don't just do this. I don't just make YouTube videos. I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually doing this every morning. So that's why sometimes there's pauses in my videos. And uh, hey, sometimes some people like that because I'll, I'll even have to look up bugs here and there. So um, some people like that because you can see the learning process. But I do apologize when I do have to think. So that's why there's random pauses here and there. But like I said, there's more concise videos in the boot camp that go over all the code. You get all the code, all that good stuff um, if you are short on time. But um, yeah, so I want to pull in the bars here. And since I just, let's see. I want to get the bars from, from the exchange that we're on. So I'm setting this up in a way that we can add more exchanges. But for now, I've set exchange to Femex. And I could set this and say like Coinbase, I could say Binance, I would just have to make those connections up here. But for now, since it's just a list and of one thing, which is Femex, I can say bars equals, remember I'm saying we're doing a loop here, so I can say exchange dot fetch open high close and then we want to pass in tickers and then time frame and then limit equals number of bars okay I'll make this so you can see it a little better Boom, just like that. Now we want to say new DF, new DF equals PD dot data frame. And in that data frame, we're going to have bars and we're going to have columns. And those columns are going to be timestamp, going to be the open, we're going to be the high the low and the close and then probably the volume yeah let's get the volume just like that so now we have the high open low all the stuff we need let's go ahead and make that a little better for you and then from there We want to change the timestamp to be a little more computer readable. So let's say new DF equal, uh, not new DF, timestamp equals PD to date time. And we'll say new, I'll put it down here, new DF timestamp unit equals milliseconds just like that and then let's just set a ticker found to true remember i'm saying this as a try block so essentially i'm saying hey boom we found a ticker because sometimes we won't now what we want to do is we want to find the support and the resistance So like support, you know, would be like ish down here. If you look at the top right, you see kind of this is support ish area, and this would be resistance ish area up here, depending on the time frame you're looking at. So um, I think we're doing five minute time frames here, and let's say support equals new DF, and let's say we want the low dot minimum. 
So this is actually not the close. You can see the bars close here in the top right. I'm looking at the, the exchange now. Uh, you can see the bar closes here at this price. For example, in this example, it's 22810, but I'm actually getting the low. So 22750. Some people would argue that a breakout is where the body closes, like or the support is where the body closes up here. But for this case, I'm doing it down here. If you wanted it to do it the other way, you would just change this low to close. Spell it the right way, but <laughs> you know that's pretty easy to do. But I wanted to show you the distant difference there. And let's say resist tent equals new df dot high. Well, not dot high, but. And then we do max. So same thing for here. Super easy to make the support and resistance. It just depends on how you want to make it. You can see some people would argue that the resistance is where the bar closes, would be right here, 22941. But I'm doing it in a way that it's where the wick, the wick is, 22970. So whichever way you want to do that, you can change this if you if you'd like that to be at the close or whatever. Um, Let's see what the low to high value is. So pretty much resistance minus support. And then I want to see what the average is. The average equals resistance plus support. Remember, that's the high plus the low. And then divide by two because there's two, right? So let's go ahead and print some information for us. Support is this. High is this. Low to high is this. And then the average is this. So let's throw those in there. And then support. Just like that. So let's make this a little, well, actually, I'm going to keep it like that. Oh, so it'll look weird. Um, but there, you can see it. Boom. And then let's put an accept block here. Accept print F. There is no symbol for tickers. OB equals nothing. Ticker found equals false. So the order book equals nothing. Now let's run this because I want to see if we've gone so far. Essentially, we're going through each exchange. Right now, I only have one exchange, but later, if you wanted to set up more exchanges, you could just throw, throw your keys up here and then loop through them here. Uh, if you do have a question on that, just let me know. Uh, in the comment section, I can make a follow-up video, or if if that's needed, or um, I'm going to put all the code to this in the bootcamp right after this, so uh, that should all be there. Let's see here. Let's run it and see what we have. Okay, so now it's just printing out all of the. The highs, the lows, this is for every single, this is beautiful. This is the high, the low, the low to high, the average for every single ticker on Femex. So we're looking at Femex right here on our right side. And on our left side, we're literally getting every single ticker. And we're seeing the high, the low, and the average. And it's just going through there. And now we pretty much have to make an indication of whether it's breaking out or breaking down or not. So you can see there's like, I don't know, 75 to 100 different symbols on Phoenix that we're going through. And you can see now it's hitting the accept block. It's saying, hey, there's no symbol for this or that. You know, bake USDT, yada, yada. So our try and accept block is working perfectly. And now we just need to go ahead and do the signal part. So perfect. Let's go back into our 
try block here and let's see what else we can do you can hear my bot still trying to close this shib position i need to probably fix this a bit because while it's trying to close this shib position it's actually neglecting all of our other positions and you can see here that if i open this up like our other positions like this one this eth position hit 10 percent which are we're just trying to make like eight percent i believe and this is hit 18 percent so while these percentages are going higher that's kind of good but at, at the same time it's kind of bad because I, I would like it to work differently than this. I would like it to see what positions have hit their target and then exit totally out of them immediately instead of saying, hey, I'm just trying to close out the SHIB position and then I'll move on to the next one. So, you know, while we did build this one on screen, this is like a good example of why I, I don't recommend just running running the bots that we built because I'm building in I'm building on YouTube with you um, this has obviously done super well as you can see by the results open open positions but there's tweaks that I'm gonna make so you know while I do share as much as possible here on YouTube and I really love sharing with you um, it's just kind of risky to to just run anything live so I always recommend don't just like copy my code and run it use what I I do here on this YouTube channel as a kind of tool in your toolbox right you've got me to help out and help do some of the coding for you that you can then learn from and then put it into your own strategies so I just never want to get to the point where it's like hey you know, I don't want to be one of those guys like, hey, use my algo or use my bot because it's so, so profitable and you're going to make a bajillion dollars. It's like that's not that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to share what I'm personally building. And hey, if you can build something off of that, that's awesome. It's kind of my version of open source and just like sharing the information because nobody else is sharing this information so if you do appreciate all of that please do tap that like button it tells me hey keep building with me opposed to building without me so let's just dive back into it i know i just went on a whole tangent about a different bot and all that good stuff but um let's get back into it and let's get these signals going so let's see how are we going to do this Essentially, we are printing out the support, the high, the resistance, low to high, and all that good stuff right now. And from here, we want to go ahead. Hmm. I want to bring in the bids the bids and the ass because sometimes the data is going to be lagging a little bit right because if you're getting the five minute bar you're actually getting five minutes ago at some point so it might be two minutes ago but it's some some minute ago so i actually want to bring in the bid and the ask because the bid and the ask are right up here if you want to see on the top right you can see this is the ask this is the bid this is a more accurate price than the five minute bar so i want to bring that in and We'll do that by bringing in the order book first. So let's like say exchange, exchange dot fetch order book, fetch order book. And then we want to pass in the tickers. And then we want to say the bid equals order book bids at the zero position, zero position, and then the ask is pretty similar, except we wanna say asks, asks, just like that. And we can say print F for tickers, the current bid is bid ask is ask so we'll just put an ask there and bid here 
and now we have a little feedback Now we want to make a data frame, another data frame, <laughs> data frame for signals. So let's call this a signal DF. I'm just going to copy. No, let's not copy that. Let's go PD dot data frame. This is going to make my code run a little slower, but oh well. Let's say timestamp, timestamp. Time stamp equals new DF. So that's our old DF. We call it new DF. And then let's go ahead and just do some copy paste in here. Call this tickers and let's call this symbol symbol and ticker interchangeable word for me at least and then this one we'll call this exchange again building this in a way that we can add more exchanges because you know why not I like to build things that are easily usable again. Let's click do support here on this. And let's do resistance. It's funny because I don't know how to spell resistance. But that goes to show like you don't need to be a genius to do this stuff. You just have to have a good strategy. A lot of people think that you can't algo trade if you don't know how to do math or whatever. But like you can see I can't even I can't, I'm a native English speaker and I can't even spell. So uh, let's change this one to bid. Let's change this one to ask. Let's change this break, uh, let's call it break out, so out. And this one will say break down. So the difference between a breakout is breakout's going up, breakdown is going down. So we would say false. We're gonna set these to false to start and then we'll change them later. So. How will we change them? I'll show you. It's not too hard to do. Let's go ahead and say if bid is over resistance. So this is the current price pretty much. If current price is above resistance, print F. We have a break out for takers. bid is higher than resistance. So that's pretty easy, right? And then we'll say breakout. I just can't type. Break out equals true. And then we want to say signal DF. In that DF, remember we said breakout is false. We actually want to make it true now. And we can do that by just saying breakout. Because we just set breakout to true, right? Set breakout to true, and then we set it true here. I could have used pandas to do this, but I think this is an easier way for now. And then we want to say LF ask is under support. I want to do all of this, copy all of this over, and then we need to change it to break down. Break down. 
and then bid is lower than support. Okay, perfect, perfect. Break down equals true. Break down equals break down. That should be good. Let's see if I got out of this position yet. Sheesh. This is one, uh, almost a bug, I would say, on my, on this bot. It's trying to get out of this position, but it's not. But hey, at least it's still doing well. So um, that code, if you want to, you know, see it, it's all in the boot camp. Link for that below. Um, but like I said, you know, I, I built this live here on YouTube. So, you know, use it at your own risk, of course. Um, I actually just would not, even though it's been profitable for me, I would not suggest using it because I built it you know the whole point of this YouTube channel is just to kind of demystify how hard this is you can see I don't even know how to spell <laughs> um, so if I can help demystify this industry then I think it's gonna help some people at least get into it and the reason I think more people should how go trade is because it's like what all the hedge funds and the banks are doing. So it's like if institutions are doing it, why isn't it retail? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Let's see what else do we need. Oh, I need to get the signal from the last loop or each loop. Okay. So. What we'll do here is after this accept block, we want to say signal DF equals signal DF minus one on. So we just want the last line of the signal DF essentially. And then we want to print signal DF. And then we want to append it to our regular DF and say signal DF here. And then let's print some space because it'll just look nicer. And then let's put a little nice little line here so we can make it look beautiful. And then outside of the except, so after we're done, I wanna count the number of breakouts. So let's say count the number of breakouts or downs, and that's pretty easy to do. We just wanna print df break breakdown dot value counts. And then pretty much the opposite for Oh, I didn't spell this right. Or I did, but break out. Break down and break out. I'm looking up here. Break out, break down. Break out, break down. So that's how you count the number of breakouts. And then let's print the number of symbols is this. Okay. And then we want to be able to compare it. So like get the symbol count in order to compare. Let's say symbol count and you'll see what I'm doing here in a second. Length df.index. See, we're just trying to get the the length of the symbols. And then we want to get the breakout sum. So breakout number equals df. So how many breakouts are there really? Break out dot sum. And let's say print. I don't think we actually need this stuff, but we'll see. it might be nicer. Total number of break outs that are true equals breakout number. 
And then we kind of want to do the same thing, but for breakdown. So I love copy and pasting. It's the best thing in the world. One of my favorite parts of coding is literally how you can just do something once. And then from there on, you can just use it over and over again. Just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Total number of breakdowns. Breakdowns. Reminds me of the J. Cole song. Breakout number. Did I do that? Breakdown number. Just like that. Okay, so breakdown number is like that. Now, does it all look right? Yep, so breakout is taking the sum of the breakouts and the sum of the breakdowns. It's gonna print that for us. And then just a few more lines here. We wanna get like a signal if it's bullish or not. Get bullish signal or bearish signal. And how do we do that? Say if breakdown number is bigger than breakout number. So this is gonna tell us, hey, is there more breakouts or breakdowns overall on all crypto, on this exchange at least? There are more break out, breakdowns than breakouts bullish set to whatever we set it to. So we set it to false on that one. So we'll do a LF here and do something similar, but the opposite breakout number. If this number is bigger than the breakdown number, bullish would be true because look more breakouts than there's breakdowns. That means overall it's, it's, um, crypto is pretty bullish. So this could be a good indicator for there are more breakouts. Downs. Okay. So there we go. Now this is going to tell us the overall state of crypto low key, very low key. Uh, for at least the time frame we have. Remember, we're looking at five minute time frames. So everything is just variable dependent on the time frame you're looking at. Like, are you looking at a weekly time frame? Are you looking at a five minute time frame? And so on and so on. Kind of another point to like why I don't sell trading bots. I'll never sell a trading bot because it's like, how can I possibly tell you what time frame I'm running it on? And on top of that, sure, I can tell you the time frame. That's not too hard. But the reality is, how am I able to tell you when I'm turning on and off strategies? That's why I think it's such BS when people are like, hey, buy, buy this bot, it works yada yada percent, whatever. It's like, number one, if everybody's using the same trading bot or trading algorithm, that strategy is eventually going to go to zero. Number two, there's no way to tell you when the creators turn it on or off my strategy includes turning on and off different trading algorithms depending on the environment that we're in. So unless the trading algo is already set up with, you know, pieces of machine learning that can really tell you exactly when to turn on and off without the operator or the creator. And in this case, I'm the creator. If I can't sit there and tell you when to turn on or off, then there's no way you should just be running my bots live. Again, the whole point of this YouTube channel is like, hey, if I can teach you how to build, then you can build forever. You can take all your strategy. And that gets me so excited because the way I look at it is we all have different views and outlooks on the world, right? We all have different experiences. We all see different things every single day. And we all come to different different strategies and we have different assumptions and you know we all just see the world differently so my strategies that i come up with are going to be heavily biased to the things that i've learned in my life while yours are going to be similar right they're going to be 
skewed towards the things that you've learned in your life or the way you look at the market and approach trading, right? So that's why it's so exciting for me to be able to teach you. Number one, it's not that hard to build these. Number two, like here's some like ideas, but if I can teach you how to code pieces of it, then you can build your own strategy because that's where the alpha is. It's in your own strategy. Um, yeah, so and rent. Let's go ahead and say print. There are the same amount of breakouts and breakdowns, right? Because I said if the breakout number is higher than this, there, it's bullish. There's more breakouts, right? If it's lower, then it's sorry, other way around. So if breakdown number is bigger than breakout number, it's bullish. It's not bullish, it's false. That, that makes more sense. And then breakout number, if that's higher, that total number is higher than the breakdown number, then bullish is true. Okay, so what else do we need here? What else, what else? Okay, I want to do this one little thing here. Essentially make a new data frame if the row is true. So rows with true equals df.lock df where it says break out where that equals true or so let's do or operator df dot break down. If either of those conditions are true, then let's print rows true and I think I'll mark this out for now, but I'm going to put it here for later. I'll be able to export it. So rows out true to CSV. And we'll just say signal breakout dot CSV with the index equals false. But I'm not going to use that for now. Maybe, maybe you want to use that in your strategy. Okay. Now I want to do something that might help in the future, but essentially I'm going to get 7%. I want to say if, if 7%, if 7% or more of the symbols are breaking out or down, uh, put emergency close. Now, this I'm not actually going to close things here, but this is just kind of an indicator, right? So if breakdown number is bigger than, let's say, a perk, sorry, perk 07, print emergency close all 7 percent or more seven percent plus symbols are breaking down now of course we need to make seven percent so perk seven equals symbol count times point zero seven so we're taking the symbol count and saying seven percent and then if that breakout number if there's a number that's bigger than 7% of that symbol count, so AKA 7% or more of symbols are breaking out or breaking down, breaking down, then we want to say emergency close. 
Now, this is just feedback for myself. Like if, for example, I'm not a hand trader, but if I wanted to enter a hand trade, then um, this would be good. Uh, let's go ahead and put an LF actually here because I want to do the same thing. LF break out number is bigger than per zero seven print print this and I want to say I want to set a variable or else it makes not too much sense perk 7% true emergency close okay finally filled Sheesh, now it's moving on. Sorry, I'm jumping back to this bot now. The mean reversion bot you saw probably for most of this video has been trying to close the SHIB. Uh, it looks like we've hit our, our max or our PL on XLM, Solana, um, GLM. We went way over it because of that problem I explained earlier. Ethereum, we hit our target as well 10%. Uh, our target is 9%, as you can see the feedback here. Now it's just waiting for it to fill. So if you look back at this, look how long it was trying to close SHIB. Like, there's just not a lot of buyers and sellers, clearly, because it wasn't closing, and I only do limit orders. So you can see that the GRM, for example, hit the target of 9%, and the buy to close, it filled almost immediately because it moved on to Ethereum. Ethereum's at 10%, awesome, that's our target. Now you can see it's done four, out, four orders. It enters the order, cancels it enters the order, canceled it. And then something I didn't expect in the kill switch, probably meaning it filled. So you can see now it's running through all of these other ones saying, hey, GMT is at 6%, TRX is at 5%, XRP is 7 point whatever percent, Dash, checking mean reversion, sell to open, we just open a position on Dash, ZC PNL. Okay, so these are all my PNLs and I'm pretty sure if we look up here, what is our target? Oh, target is 9% on all of these. So they do have to move a little bit more, but hey, these are all profitable right now, which is cool to see, but it doesn't really mean anything. I'm not, I don't think on one or two trades or even five or 10 trades, the play for me is like over a thousand trades, right? So, you know, this is a nice example. I'm sure tomorrow's video, they'll show a lot of negative percentages. I don't want this to be like, Oh my God, my bot never loses. If your bot never loses, it's a lie. Like it does lose, it absolutely does lose. Let's go look at the closed positions just to show that it does lose. Like we're in, okay, there's a losing position right here. Um, let's go to closed positions here and let's try to find some losses. It's just the we're reverting to the mean right now. So all of these ROI, 9%, 15%, 4%, 14%, 11%, 10%, 12%. Eight percent, nine percent, positive ROIs, eight percent. But this is a well chosen time. Like I just happen to be making a video while we're mean reverting, so it does look like my bot doesn't lose. But it's just not true. It does lose. I'm gonna find a loser here. Okay, well there's no losers on this page, and I'm I'm sorry. It's nine percent, seven percent, eight percent, eight percent, eight percent, eleven percent, eight percent, eleven percent, eight percent, eight percent, eleven percent, nine percent. So ironically there are no losers on my roi column for these last like 20 some trades but i'm telling you as an honest person my bot loses as well it's just i happen to be here with zero losses on these positions and that's i guess that's cool but i don't want you to get misconstrued thinking that hey you can just use my bot and it's going to be super profitable like i've said so many times in this video already it's just not true that the bots are are going to be profitable right off the bat anything i build on youtube is more so to help show you number one that it's not that hard like i'm just a regular dude can't even spell resistance right and i'm able to build bots and then number two, like most importantly, you can see the things that I'm building, the way I'm thinking about things, and then you can see how I actually code it. And from there, you can actually go build your own strategy, take your strategy and turn it into a bot. Just because this bot sh happens to have zero losses right now, 
doesn't mean it doesn't have losses. I, I will tell you again and again, it loses, it loses money. This is just super weird. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump back on tomorrow and hopefully it's showing some losses because this, this looks too good to be true. I don't want you to think that, hey, you can just build a bot and it's gonna be super profitable all the time. Or I don't want you to think that, hey, if you join my bootcamp that you're gonna get super profitable bots. You're gonna see, you're gonna see all the code that I build, of course, but I, I really need you to understand that like, this is an anomaly, I would say, like to look at this P&L and see there's zero losses in the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. In the last 20 trades, there are zero losses, but I, I'm not sitting here saying, hey, go buy my bot because it's going to be super profitable. I don't, I never want to go down that route. I never, never, never do. Uh, I've had some people contact me and say, hey, you know, I saw that your bot's super profitable. Can I have it and start writing it? And the answer is no. Like I'm already going across the, the boundaries here and other quants and algo traders are probably mad at me for sharing all this information. I'm not just going to give you my trading bot that's profitable i would way 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 rather teach you exactly how to build your own bot with your strategy because like i said we all have different experiences and you know if i can teach you how to build your strategy into a into a robust trading bot guess what then you'll have your strategy and you'll be able to build a new one tomorrow and the next day and the next day i just think it's a i think it's a scam to to say that you know you can just plug and play a bot um, you can't do that you cannot do that so if anybody's ever offering you a bot don't do it unless you're going into it with the thought of hey i can learn from this and then build my own strategy if it's like a, a website an app or whatever a trading bot in my opinion that's not going to work so um and rent let's keep going so essentially now i want to set Percentage zero cent lows close to true. And I want to do one here and percentage zero percent highs close. Perfect. And then here we're pretty much saying no anomalies in breakouts or downs and then I'm gonna put a little note to myself measuring if 7% so no anomalies and breakouts or breakdowns and I put a little note saying measuring is 7% so you can change this this could be like 20% if you want 30% this just depends on you um, and now let's run it and see if it works so essentially from what I've built here thus far with you here on YouTube is essentially we're going through every single symbol on this exchange and we can have every single crypto exchange if we want and we're saying hey has it has it broken through support or has it broken through resistance a breakout is when it breaks through resistance a breakdown is when it breaks downward through through support so, you know, everybody have, might have a different definition, but let's go ahead and run this bot and see how it does. Okay, so it looks like it's running here and you can see all the information we need to see. Saying it's kind of going fast here, but I can break one of these down. So it's essentially running saying, hey, this is the ticker. This is a symbol. The, is it breaking out? False, false. Is it breaking down? False, false. And if it breaks out, it's going to tell us when it breaks out and it'll, it'll slow down and put it into its own data frame. So this is pretty amazing in my, my opinion, because now we can clearly see, hey, what symbol is breaking out and what symbol is breaking down? And I can just let this run all day. And when things start to break out, if, if I want to do some hand trading, which I don't really like doing, I can do it or I can turn on a bot, my breakout bot, when it does break out. Or I can take one of these 
these variables we've set up and just implement it into that breakout bot and say, hey, when a when an altcoin or whatever is breaking out, let's turn on the breakout bot. Or what you could do is just have your breakout bot looking at this, this function that we just built here today and run it when something's breaking out, right? So there's so many possibilities we can do from here. I'm super excited about this because this is, this is super helpful for all of my strategies moving forward. And like I said, you know, I, do this every single day i build new trading algorithms and i put it on youtube because it was super hard for me to learn all this information when i was trying to automate my trading so i thought hey why not teach it right at least teach a piece of it so i try to put as much as possible here on the youtube and all i ask is you do tap that like button if you do appreciate me sharing all this uh, i don't think many other Algo traders are sharing this. Actually, I know for a fact because I tried to learn and it was super hard to learn. So if you appreciate all this, go ahead and tap that like button. Other than that, you know, I do invite you to, to my boot camp. I, I make short videos. I give you all the code, walking through all of the, the new strategies that we build each day. And and yeah, it's just a little bit more concise because I know these videos can get long because like I said, I'm, I'm literally here building for doing my daily work and um yeah i just i just include you in it so appreciate your time today go ahead and tap that like button if you like what we built today subscribe if you do feel so inclined check out the Al algo trade camp where everything is all the code all that good stuff and hey if you're not quite ready for that don't worry about it i'm gonna put another video here on the screen let's keep on coding and i'll see you there